Welcome to the Equinity Podcast, where horse owners just like you share their incredible Equinity stories and how Equinity is changing their horses' lives. Whether you're searching for something to give your performance horse better focus, faster recovery, and more stamina, or in the extreme case where all hope seems lost, give your horse what it needs to help heal at a cellular level, you'll find it here. So jump in on today's episode to hear how Equinity is helping horses worldwide. Now, welcome your host, John Dowdy. Hello and welcome to another Equinity Podcast. We are swinging up in the great state of South Carolina. I've got Elizabeth Welch on the call this week. Elizabeth, welcome to the Equinity Podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, it's always a pleasure. We're always excited and uh, welcome, welcome. So um, you are, uh, let's talk a little bit about your background. Um, you're in the hunters and the jumper world. Uh, how long have you been doing that? Oh, gosh, pretty much since I was a kid. I started out doing the hunters and um, I've dabbled in some other disciplines, but I always come back to the hunter jumpers. And then I got into the jumpers when I was oh, probably in my late 20s, early 30s, somewhere in there. And uh, I've been kind of doing both ever since. Well, fantastic. And um, one of the reasons I reached out to you uh, specifically is you had sent or actually had posted, I think, originally um, um, a, kind of a testimonial. You had commented on one of our Facebook ads about a, a mayor that was uh, foundered, and you had noted that you could see you know, a, a definite improvement in the feet uh, or hooves and significant increase in sole depth. Um, so I had reached out to you, and um, you had sent some uh, radiographs and things, and I asked for your permission to, to post those as an ad, which you've been running for quite some time. And um, although you were a bit apprehensive about uh, doing the podcast, I, I sweet-talked you into it, I think. So here we are. <laughs> <laughs> here um, we are. <laughs> yeah. But one of the interesting things, um, I, always, I always find this uh, humorous uh, myself, but because um, you always have people that... Um, you know, they comment on on these things, and you know, here we're talking radiographs, and you know, there's a lot of people like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for sharing, because you know they're dealing with similar issues. You know, we're talking about a foundered horse, um, uh, and as we were chatting prior to recording, um, you also let me know this horse that actually had IR and laminitis, a picky eater. And everything kind of hit at once, but in regards to the the actual um, X rays that we are showing, of course you have naysayers, which you know I think are in any um, niche out there, um, you know that are saying there is no way that these are the same, you know X rays, you know, and of course you've you've been uh, doing your best jumping in there. Hey, these are mine, and I've got a whole catalog and yada yada yada, but. Um, let's go back to uh, the beginning of uh, what this horse, I mean, it, it was perfectly fine. And one day it sh started showing signs of an abscess. But tell us what was going on and what happened from the beginning and about what the time frame was on this. So it was roughly at the end of September of last year, 2019. And uh, the horse just sort of became acutely lame, but it was really uh, concentrated in her right front. And it, it really just presented like a horse that seemed like it was going to, you know, blow an abscess. You know, the horse became acutely lame and it was lame in one foot. Uh, she never presented like a laminitis horse at the time. She never looked rocked back, never was, you know, trying to get all the weight off the front feet. So for a couple of days, we said, oh, well, you know, it looks like she's going to have an abscess. And we kind of treated her like she was going to have a foot abscess. Obviously, it didn't seem like it was getting better. So I had already consulted with the vet. And I said, well, let's have the vet obviously come out and take a look at this. And, you know, if it is an abscess, see if we can figure out where it is and, you know, try to get that treatment happening. And if it's not, what the problem is. And so obviously, my vet came out and did some diagnostics on the horse. And that is unfortunately when we took radiographs and then found out that she does have rotation. She had rotation in both front feet, worse in the right than the left. And then of course it was like, Ooh, yikes. So then we had to, you know, come up with a completely different plan because it wasn't an abscess. So. Yeah. So, so finding out that it was founder, but then you also found out, um, she was IR, had the laminitis and all these things just kind of all hit at once. 
Right. Well, we didn't know she had IR at the time, and, you know, we were trying to figure out why maybe this horse might have developed laminitis. So one of the things that we did is we pulled some blood work on her, and that is obviously how we found out that she actually had IR. So our best educated (laughs) assumption is that the horse had developed IR, and then because, you know, we didn't have a horse on a feed regimen and care program that's suitable for an IR horse that it probably just caused the laminitis to happen. So Mm -hmm. obviously once we knew she had IR, we immediately made changes to her, her diet and her lifestyle and all the things that you would do for a horse that has IR. Sure. And then of course, on top of that, then we're now trying to, you know, treat the horse who has laminitis. So (laughs) a a myriad of, uh, fun things to, to try to work out all at once. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So in the course of uh, all of this happening, and of course you're doing research online, and then um, you found one of the, uh, or I guess it found you, the uh, one of the many ads that we have strolling across people's timeline. Um, what what initially caught your eye with that? Well, I think I had seen some ads for your product on my Facebook feed before, uh, you know, just because it's always different ads, especially since I'm a horse person, so lots of horse related things come across and one had caught my eye Uh, I don't remember specifically which one but there was an ad that was someone talking about a foundered horse and that they the product they felt that you know helped improve the quality of the foot and help the horse grow some better foot so then obviously I took a look a little closer I looked at your Facebook page looked at your website did a little research and looked at the ingredients and I, you know, one of the things that was appealing to me was there was no sugar, no filler. So something that's safe to feed an IR horse. Cause that was obviously important. Um, and then I said, well, let me take a chance. I'll buy some of the product and, and try it out. I mean, obviously we already had the mayor on a, you know, a plan that we were following with my vet, with my farrier and mm-hmm. all those things. And I said, well, maybe just add this and I obviously asked my vet about it and they said, you know, Hey, it sounds like there should be a reason you shouldn't feed this. So why not? You know? Right. Um, and so I said, well, you know, worst case scenario is it doesn't do anything or if it helps, then that's awesome. Right. (laughs) So I figured to just go ahead and buy some and give it a try. Yeah. Now, um, your, uh, mare is also a very picky eater. So what'd you find? Oh (laughs) yeah. Yeah, she's one of those that if you put something in the food that she doesn't like, she will not eat it. She won't eventually eat it. She will not eat it at all. She would rather starve, and that's it. So yeah. If you want to give her things that she doesn't like to eat, you got to paste and syringe it in the mouth. I had to do that for a long time with a lot of the meds we were doing with the vet because you put it in the food, and she said, nope, not happening. Yeah. So and and what what'd you find with the what did you find with the Equinity product? No issue at all. I mean, I put it in the food, you know, as soon as I got the product, you know, and tried it out and put it in there and no issue. So, I mean, not even a, a sniff and a hesitation. I mean, she just ate it. So I said, great. Yeah. <laughs> even better. Absolutely. Um, yeah. We've, we so found that a lot. Uh, a lot of the picky eaters tend to lick it right up. Now, every now and then you do have a, uh, or we found a, a really stubborn one. And, and so the uh, sure. so- solution to that, we found, of course, some people would syringe it. Uh, maybe a little applesauce or coconut oil or any kind of an oil right. or something to, to kind of mask it. But it's typically not a long-term thing that you have to do that either. It's typically just to get them going. But uh, we, we rarely have any any horses that refuse to eat it because, you know, the amino acids are kind of salty by nature anyways. So, um, so well, and I feed oh, sorry, oh, no, go, go ahead. I feed, uh, beet, beet pulp as well. So, I mean, that helps to kind of mix it in. And I mean, you know, all the, the horses, I'm doing a no sugar, no molasses beet pulp, obviously for mm-hmm. the IR horse. Right. Um, well, and actually all the horses get no sugar, no molasses beet pulp, but that clearly gives another way to kind of mix it in. So it sticks and it can't be sifted out. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, up to this point, uh, or you started the equinity and then, um, how long was it before you started seeing, some results with that so we probably i don't remember an exact date but her we had trouble getting her right front in particular stabilized with with the rotation we got the left front stabilized pretty pretty quickly and the right front just despite all the things we were doing that one just the rotation kind of get getting worse and worse and worse and um 
she also has always been very flat footed and thin soul. So she didn't really have a lot of playroom in the soul anyway. And by probably mid October, it was pretty scary. I mean, the, the tip of the coffin bone was really close to that, you know, the, the bottom of the foot and, you know, very scary. So I, that's when I started around the equinity. It was around right around that time when it was super scary radiographs. And I, at that time, since she was still, you know, very new with the rotation and, you know, we were probably taking radiographs, having the vet come out a couple times a week. So we were taking radiographs pretty regularly of the feet, you know, a couple times a week there for a while. Mm-hmm. I would say within, for sure, within 30 days, we noticed a difference. Uh, maybe even a little sooner. I'd have to go back and look through all the radiographs that I right. had for an exact timeline. But I'd say for sure within 30 days, there was a noticeable difference in the soul depth. Um, not necessarily with the rotation per se, mm-hmm. but a noticeable increase in the soul depth, which was obviously good because then the fear of having the bone come out of the bottom of the foot went away. Right. Um, and for sure within 60 days, um, I mean, there was – a massive amount of soul depth. I mean, it was pretty amazing. I don't know that without the radiographs, if it hadn't been my horse and I was, you know, having the vet out there and we were taking radiographs all the time and I was watching it, it was pretty unbelievable. So, you know, I think I would have had a hard time believing it myself if it wasn't my own personal horse that it was happening to. And I had, you know, all of those pictures kind of as proof and as a timeline. And, And the interesting thing is, you know, adding the equinity was the only thing that we had done different at the time. I mean, mm-hmm. we hadn't made any other changes to, you know, the already prescribed vet program that we were on. So it was even my vet and farrier were like, wow, it's pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. Well, I think it's important, then, uh, important to, uh, um, you know, let people know as well that are tuning in maybe for the first time, maybe, you know, they've kind of been seeing the product around and not sure exactly what it is. Um, I'll spend, just a brief moment and just kind of give you a a cliff notes version of those tuning in. Um, So the equinity product is 100% pure amino acids. So there's no fillers, no sugars, no starches, and there's no loading dose. Serving size is 5.2 grams, which is not quite a tablespoon. Uh, But what's really unique about this product uh, outside of those things, um, the amino acids are specifically formulated to, to stimulate the pituitary gland, which is the master gland in the body. Um, And whether it's a tiny mini horse or a draft horse, they all get the same dose because the pituitary is roughly the same size in mammals, about the size of a pea. And the pituitary gland, uh, once stimulated, releases the necessary hormones which help the body heal at a cellular level. So you could have uh, 50, 100 horses and giving all equinity. And because we're giving the body what it needs to release its own hormones, it's that horse's body that's sending the hormones to the problem areas. So in this particular case, uh, we're talking about a very thin-soled, foundered horse, um, you know, and in 30 days, and definitely by 60 days, you had noticed a significant soul depth uh, increase, which is, uh, you know, vitally important for foundered horse. Um, what other things, uh, of course, you were dealing with, um, you know, laminitis. Uh, what other th- benefits have you seen since using the product now outside of the increased soul depth? Well, um, interestingly enough, so I I was impressed with the product for this horse. And obviously, you know, doing my research and looking, the product has many benefits in addition to helping the feet. Um, You know, I like, you know, you obviously read the label and it talks about how it's good for joints, it's good for soft tissue, good for bones good for relaxation and focus and recovery for horses your performance horses and i said well i'm gonna try it out on another horse yeah (laughs) so i started giving it to my personal show horse kind of as an experiment just to see and um, since then i've actually got a lot of horses in my barn on it because i really liked the product and kind of believed in it so the couple of things i would say uh, for all the horses across the board, let's see, we've got seven horses on it now in my barn. And I would definitely say across the board, all the horses have been noticeably more relaxed and more focused. I definitely would agree with 
the writing on the label. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that That's across the board. All the horses seem that way. I would definitely say uh, all the horses, um, I think their coats look really nice. Uh, one of my customers has a pony who's just had a decent coat, not a, not a bad coat by any means, but the pony was on the product for about 30 days. And we recently, you know, gave it a body clip. It was time to go to a show. And, I mean, the pony looks amazing. <laughs> She's super shiny, super dappily. I mean, her coat, super. I mean, it's the best it's ever looked. I would say all the horses' feet look pretty good. I mean, just, just overall, the horses look really good. Yeah. And I would say that's very um, typical for those using the product or, you know, all the things that you're describing. And ultimately, it's it's helping to balance the horse from the inside out. So there's all these nice benefits that come along. You know, people in the show horse uh, industry, you know, they, they definitely like the uh, softer, shinier uh, coats. A lot of horses will dapple out, fill out, top line, things like that. But, um, and of course, they they all give us feedback of how the hooves are healthier, stronger, faster growing. And I think it's also important to know that, you know, this equinity product is not a miracle supplement. It's not the end all be all. Uh, one of the examples I give, you know, and, you know, as you described with this mayor, you know, you're dealing with uh, some pretty significant uh, issues going on with the founder, thin soul, um, the laminitis, and of course the IR. Um, but, you know, you've got a great, uh, medical uh, team with your vet um your farrier you're doing all the things that you know to do and one of the examples i give is you could have the greatest farrier on the planet standing in front of your horse but if there's nothing to work with and you've got a super thin soul you know what is the farrier supposed to do here i mean he doesn't really have much exactly. to work with and so one of the great things with this equinity horse excel product is it helps grow a healthier stronger you know, hoof. And so it, ultimately what it's doing, it's giving your farrier more to work with in a shorter amount of time. Um, so what I think, the, you know, one of the, the best examples I've come up with is no matter what you're dealing with, um, challenges with your horse and even a lot of mystery lameness things, it seems to us with all the feedback that we get is this Equinity Horse Excel product, it really ends up being the that missing little puzzle piece that you're looking for, you know, when everybody else can't seem to figure out what's going on or you're scratching your head or maybe you've tried everything under the sun and nothing else seems to be working um uh, just jump on board and and do what you did you know it's like hey if it doesn't work you're not out a lot of money but the uh the odds of this not working are nil to none because they are amino acids they have to work <laughs> you know so i, I agree <laughs> yeah yeah but uh well that I mean, it, it's it's logical and makes sense so it's uh yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. Well, um, if there's uh, anybody tuning in that, that might be on the fence, um, other than everything that you've already described, is there anything that you uh, could tell them to to maybe uh, give it a try? I, I mean, pretty much that's just it. I mean, it's, it's not going to hurt to give it a try. I mean, what I did, you know, being a cautious person that I am and like to do my homework and research, I started by buying, you can buy little samples of your product. So I bought the little samples because I said, well, let's make sure the horse will actually eat it. And let's make sure that, you know, I like it before I commit to buying a bigger tub. But even if you buy a bigger tub, it, it when you do the math and break it down, it, it's not that much per month. Because I've certainly read some comments where people say it's really expensive. And I'm like, well, the, the tub is basically $100 and some change. It's 100 servings. You give one serving a day. So that's <laughs> over a three-month supply. Right. So it's like $35 a month. And, I mean, go look at any other joint supplement, skin and coat supplement, any sort of metabolic supplement, any supplement on the market. You're going to pay at least that, if not more. And especially for a, a supplement like this, that's a, a combination supplement that helps lots of things. Right. Versus, you know, you've got to buy your joint supplement and your skin and bone supplement and your hoof supplement. You know. Yeah. I mean, it it really isn't that expensive. I mean, you got to buy the the tub up front, but when you do the math, it's it's not not a big deal, really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it 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 really comes out to a dollar a day. I mean, it's there's a hundred plus right. servings in there, so it's uh, exactly. very very economical. We tried to price it so anybody could afford it. Um, now, uh, the last thing before I I uh, let you go on here, um, 
you know, as I mentioned in the front part of this podcast, uh, w- with the ads that we're running and we have the before and after of those radiographs, how many radiographs would you say that you've taken since the beginning um, on this mirror? Um, I'd have to double check. I've probably got at least 30 now, if not a few more, yeah. somewhere in there. Yeah. Well, and I I had noted or had uh, noted that, uh, you know, quite a few naysayers and there's people that have been around for years and years and years, farriers and, you know, old time, old timers will say um, that, you know, they look at this and, you know, and I don't blame them. You know, it's, uh, it's like too good to be true. It's, you know, cause how there's nothing on the bar- market like this product. I mean, we're blessed in that fact. So, uh, what would you say to them, um, that might be questioning, um, just the, the radiographs of before and after Any, anything you would like to put to bed or put to rest on those things? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, as you correctly pointed out, there's always going to be people that are interested. There's always going to be people that are doubters and non-believers. And I think, as I mentioned before, I, I might not have believed it myself if I didn't have my own radiographs on my own horse that I looked at with my own eyes and have watched the progression because it is pretty unbelievable, like the, the difference it made in my particular horse. Um, and clearly I can't attest that it would do that for everybody's horse, but mm-hmm. for my horse, it made a noticeable difference. Um, I mean, I don't know what else to say other than you just have to try it to see if you liked it and if you believed in it. And I've got tons and tons of radiographs to back it up. And I work very closely with my vet and my farrier and they've witnessed it with their own eyes. So <laughs> yeah, not much else I to mean, say on that. I that's think. all there is to it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Well, uh, if you're dealing with a situation where uh, you need to, you need some help with your horse's hooves, thickened soles, uh, faster, stronger, healthier growing hooves, uh, or just overall body condition, soft tissue repair. I mean, all these things. Uh, you, know, you, you can find out more information on our website, which is teamequinity.com. And uh, Elizabeth Welch from South Carolina, thank you so much for taking the time to share your story here on the Equinity Podcast. You're welcome. Thanks so much for having me. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. That's all for this episode of the Equinity Podcast. For more information on purchasing Equinity, be sure to visit our website at teamequinity.com, where you'll also find product information as well as more testimonials on how others have seen amazing results by implementing Equinity into their horse's supplement regime. We'll have more stories on how Equinity is helping horses worldwide right here on a future episode of the Equinity Podcast.